Hi everyone, Kim Watson here today with a new page tutorial uh, for my page Happy Weekend using the April Hip Kit Club kits. I'm going to start with my mixed media background to prime my cardstock. I used um, gel acrylic medium. It's really easy to apply. It's got such a lovely smooth creamy texture. So using a, an old credit card, I just made bold swipes both up and down, making sure that I had nice good coverage. The great thing about this medium is that it dries really quickly. So I could be fairly liberal with it um, on the page, making sure that all the edges are covered. Now that it's dry, I can start working on my mixed mixed medium background. I'm going to use some of the Vicky Boaten um, water soluble crayons, which came in the color kit from the April kits. The colors are really vibrant. They're beautiful sunset colors, which of course are absolutely perfect for the layout that I'm doing. I'm using an acrylic block. I needed a rigid background so that I could mix the crayons. So scribbled onto the surface of the block and then I'm now just liberally adding some water to dissolve the crayon, making a nice puddle of, of magenta paint. And then you just loosely um, smooth paint onto the paper. There's no real technique here. What I'm trying to achieve is just blend the colors beautifully to make some, some watercolor areas dotted around this page and then once dry I will then add other scrapbook elements on top. Here you'll notice I'm adding orange. The orange blends with the magenta and the intersection of the paints give another nice colour which is great in terms of what I'm doing. That pesky paper just would not stay still. It was sliding all over the surface of my table so I stuck it down with the with silly putty, press stick, whatever you call it. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Uh, America and South Africa have different brand names for different things so I'm never quite sure if I'm using the right brand name and whether you'll even know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, I'm adding a little bit of the flesh color pink to the magenta puddle here to try and create a secondary pink shade. I wasn't so happy with this magenta. I found that the color was too blue. I wanted a yellower, a yellower pink shade so I'm just messing here. I'm adding colors and blending and obviously the more color you the more water you use the better it blends. The cool thing about uh, about doing it on an acrylic block, mixing the paint on an acrylic block like this is that you can obviously take the puddles of ink and use your brush and with short fast strokes just flick it onto the paper. So um, okay, don't judge me. I daubed the paint and then took it all off. <laughs> So now I've got to go back and add it again. Anyway, as I said, uh, I'm by no means an artist. I just like to play and that's part of the process, I suppose. It's fun. So here we go again. I also discovered that in the Vicky Burton crayons, the red, which I assumed would be sort of pillar box red, actually wasn't. It was a beautiful cherry color. So I'm now achieving the closer to the, the pink color, magenta color that I was looking for all along. Not that it has to be absolutely perfect, but sometimes, you know, a blue pink looks better with whatever pattern papers you're using or a yellow pink. And in this instance, I just felt that the yellow pink would look so much better, a yellow based pink shade. So, more splatters. You notice that the intensity of the color is, is now stronger with this shade because I used more crayon. So the beauty of these crayons is that obviously you can just verify, uh, verify, <laughs> vary the intensity of the color by how much water you add or how much crayon you scribble onto the block. They're really, really simple to use. I need to add a new air watercolor area on the bottom right side of the page. So I'm using some of those splatters just with merely a wet paintbrush and I'm blending, blending the ink around. I wanted the bottom area of this puddle to, I mean this, this painted area to be a little darker. So I'm adding paint straight from the crayon. So 
some orange looks good in this corner. There we go, that's closer to what I'm looking for. And then obviously for balance, because as you know from my previous videos, I love the whole visual tri triple visual triangle thing. <laughs> and um, so now I'm adding my last area of watercolor on the bottom right. I'm doing this quite quickly. Again, there's no formula. There's, there's no right or wrong. It's just a feel thing. Um, again, by adding the crown straight to the wet paint, it dissolves really quickly, adding areas of dark, darker pink, which is what I wanted. Got nice the yellow blends. And then obviously where the two shades intersect, it gives, it gives you a new color. Yeah, that's looking good. I think I'll go and dry it with my hairdryer. I'm trying to avoid using my heat gun because it warps the paper. No, I'm happy with the effect. I think we're done. Now I'm going to get to adding the actual elements of the page. This Bella Boulevard black striped washi is super. I love the bold graphic vibe that it adds to the page. There's something so nice about black accents on a page that just gives it a little bit more contrast, which works really well. Here I'm just laying a few paper strips. The, triang the triangular pattern is from the Live More collection by Pink Fresh. And obviously that lovely blended watercolor paper, watercolor wash paper is Pink Paisley um, by Paige Evans. The stickers came off a little multi-page multi, multi -page pack of stickers which were included in the Project Life kit for the April kits. Um, I love the effect. Here I've trimmed off a Dear Lizzie piece of paper. Oh, I'm talking rubbish. It is crate paper, forgive me folks. Chasing dreams. I cut it into a large pennant shape with the, the stripes running horizontal. Then I'm going to take this uh, journal card off the Oasis paper. The paper is called Palm Springs. I'd used the sentiment for another page and then had this piece of, of pattern left over. So I thought, hey, good, good reason to use it. And it, the contrast of the dark blue against the pink shade just looks perfect. As you notice, I have a pineapple thing going on on this page. I am so in love with all of these new tropical um, elements which are so trendy right now. So give me a pineapple, give me a leaf, give me an old flamingo and I'm a happy, happy chicken. Chicken. Flamingo. Oh well. Anyhow, oh flamingo, talking about flamingos, there we have a gold foil flamingo. Adding it to my cluster. I also wanted a lovely little tropical, um, a tropical floral arrangement to to sit on top of that lovely watercolor area. So that works really well. Incidentally, that Live a Colorful Life was part of the Cut Apart sheet, which came in the Project Life Kit. It is exclusive to um, Hip Kit Club. Our very own Kimberly Hutchinson designed it. And as you can see, it looks absolutely gorgeous in this cluster. A little sparkle with some sequins. The nice thing about this month is that we got sequins instead of um, enamel dots, which is really, really great for a bit of variety. Even though, I mean, let's be honest, who could ever have enough enamel dots? But I really, really like the colors that Kimberly chose for this month's kit. They, they have got that pearlescent vibe, but the colors are a little softer, which are super. Having an indecisive moment here with those jolly hearts. I knew I wanted to add them, I just not did not know where to add them. Eventually it was just it was just stay on the tables until I had an epiphany about where it would go. Again, no laughing please. Yes, I agonize over the puffy sticker hearts. I agonize over the small details. There's something about the details that make things work or don't work. So yeah, I like to agonize. Please excuse the banging in the background. We have someone here who is attending to an outside light that is broken but of course the timing is really bad i'm doing my voiceover and he's hammering in the wall outside so forgive me <laughs> here we go i'm adding my title it's the week 
the week had the letters WKND, which came from the ephemera pack from Crate Paper, from the, the Oasis pack. That gorgeous acrylic word happy is from Bella Boulevard. I just love its loopy letters and the font and the fact that it is in white. It just really adds punch to this area of the page. Here I'm fighting with super static sequins again. They just would not come off my finger. Uh, there we go. Uh, will it come off? Will it come off? Yeah, it did. <laughs> And there we go, that is the general layout of the page. And um, I don't know if you like me, I tend to push things around before I actually use adhesive. In that way I can make 100% sure that everything is exactly balanced and straight and everything is where it should be. So that's why you'll find me like fiddling when things are shifting. I needed some extra gold foil for some balance and I know that these exclusive alphas that Kimberly Hutchinson designed for the April hip kits had some little teeny baby hearts so I thought I would grab a couple of those and add those around the page and there was a moment when I was designing this page where I thought I needed a new word and of course I absolutely adore those alphas so I thought what about the word go but yeah I don't know nah didn't like that so those came off here we can see the page is done. I've stitched it onto an orange cardstock background for stability and I've inserted my photo. Super! I'm super happy with the result. I'm just adding a little bit of journaling. Again, a page like this doesn't need too much journaling. Just excuse my large head in the, in the frame. I'm just adding a reminder of when it was and when the family came out. Great, the page is almost done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch the buttons. Now in order to get nice clean stitching, and obviously it makes it easier if you're stitching, is to pre-spike pre the holes. So I just used an awl with a foam, a foam pad. It's actually a stamping pad and um, made some holes in the paper. It makes it so much easier as you can see. I'm using regular sewing thread which I doubled up and then I just thread the, the thread through the buttonholes twice and knot them at the back to secure them. I use my awl to make sure that the knot goes right to the bottom of the, of the, the piece of thread. Otherwise uh, it loops, it makes a loose loop on the front which is obviously not what we're wanting. crisscross stitching for this button. I love the authentic crafty vibe that it adds with the crisscross. I know it's such a small thing but it I just think it's sometimes the, the page the success of a page is in the small details and that that is one of them. So yeah it's been great. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've taken it I've taken a little longer to show you so my video wasn't as, as sped up as usual. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been really fun sharing my process with you. Remember to go over to hipkitclub.net if you want to grab some of these April kits for yourself. Thanks for joining me and see you next week. Bye-bye.